What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a I think it's a 2015 BMW 528. Got the M20. Uh, let's see where is it? Where is it? it does not say yes. 14. There we go. There right there. It is a 14 and it is a 528. Right there. And it does have the N20 in there. And the issue we're having is full fan. She is leaking pretty, pretty bad. I know it's a pretty common problem on these, I believe. But it calls for like eight hours, nine hours, something like that to do this. And it's not like for the faint of heart. I'll be honest, you're supposed to drop the whole front suspension, subframe, all that stuff. But what we're going to try to do is not do that because we're going to try to change it without doing all that stuff. And the biggest issue with taking a subframe out or biggest reason why you have to take the subframe out is because it does hit the bottom and you're going to need to jack the engine up as high as you can. There is a, especially use a tow hook for one of these BMWs. And uh, make sure right down in there right where my finger is just thread it down in there and it holds the engine up on the front end and you can use a like engine holder and all that good stuff put it across here and hold up the engine I think I have a tow hook for a BMW because I don't think they put them in these anymore which I don't know why they don't but they don't uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this strut uh, brace bar, take the air cleaner out, and we're going to go ahead and disconnect the air tube, get that out of the way so we can gain access to this motor mount and bracket over here. Because to do this, you're going to have to take this motor mount and this bracket off just because the bolts on this side of the bell housing, or not bell housing, but the bolts on this side of the oil pan, they do almost hit this bracket because the engine sets at an angle actually not straight up but we are going to have to take all this off and got 16 millimeters holds this on and then just these little Let's see if i can get this out without breaking it i might have to get a pick to do that but um take this off with a my head right here and you can just take the box itself off and just take just the housing off you don't have to take this whole thing out it will make it a lot easier where's that other one i know there's one more down in there i thought yep that is just hiding but uh take this out and that'd make it a lot easier and then you just pull up on this big clip take this connector this uh evap well not evap but um vacuum line off right there and these are here they're painted but you have to squeeze them and then pull i may not be able to get to them i don't have to get a piece to do that but that's what you're going to do squeeze that right there and pull it out and then we can try to get this whole tube assembly out of the way you got everything out of the way i said i was going to move uh, i think that was a 15 this one was a 16 actually um Here's your tube. I can give you a better look. So we got this connector right here. Like I say, you squeeze them. Let me show y'all. You've never done anything with these BMWs. There's little tabs right there. You just squeeze them together and pull back. I went ahead and disconnected this one too, just because it gives me a little bit more like wiggle room with that one. And then that line was actually in this little bracket. But then you got this connector. I had to use a pick. I always use them on these BMWs because these little clips do not move well. So I just get a pick and kind of I'm trying to show y'all. Kind of just get underneath there and pull back and then up on the connectors. So that way it just gives you a little bit easier way of pulling them off without breaking anything. And I wait I didn't want to show you pulling it off. Now these things are gonna be a little tight. I did get a screwdriver, flathead. Got it somewhere, it's on the ground. And then it went in right here. And just pulled down on it like that and it pops off. But um, what you're gonna have to do is, I got my pick. These right here come up easy. Just pull up, see how that moves. 
on that one and it'll lock in place when you pull it up now on these bottom ones a lot of people don't know how they work uh if you've never seen them uh, you they make a special tool that comes in here and grabs it and pulls it back they call them like hind clips or uh, tools or something i think these are called hind clips but um oh, hems right there might be hind i don't know but um you can get your pick in here and you pull back and up and when you do it'll pull this out of that little groove but you gotta pull it back and up because that little tab right there and it should be enough to pop it out and it pulls it and see how it clips in and you can just pull it straight back now you can see there's some oil inside of here that's pretty typical on these that i've seen so don't be alarmed if there's some oil man it's not supposed to be that much in there but i'll let them know it's probably from the turbo to be honest okay and you can see all the room that we have now it's a lot more room now there's going to be I think four um bolts that hold this bracket to the engine don't take those out yet you want to take those out last after you have the engine supported but um i forgot what size they are but the main thing we're going to be looking at right now you see right there on the bottom that little e-torque sticking out from the side that you can see that goes into your motor mount you can go ahead and take that one out if you want to and then once you get ready to jack up the engine you can actually uh, jack it up enough and take tension off of it and you can pull it out that way you already have it done you're already up here also we're going to be doing oil change on here so you can go ahead and take oil filter out too if you want to but i mainly wanted to do this just because i'm already up on the top the bottom is a whole different story you do have two big covers they use eight millimeters and there is a buttload of them i got the first one out and the second one about halfway out as you can see it's right there you can see all that and you can see all the oil on it too you can actually see the oil dripping yeah she's dripping pretty good wow that's crazy did not think you could see it but we can but there's the first cover here's the second one and they want you to lower all the suspension take this take the steering rack loose and a bunch of other stuff but we're going to try to do this without lowering that down <clears throat> sorry about that kind of losing my voice there for a second and these engines sit sideways so and the reason for dropping it is because you're going to hit the subframe that's why they want you to drop the subframe down we can get to probably 90 percent of the bolts i think there's 20 of them and they want you to actually um, the two that's hard to get to are the ones right behind the motor mount and when we pull the motor mount out we can actually go in through where the motor mount was and we can get those two bolts but let me finish taking this cover off because i need it out of the way so i can do this and then we should be ready to rock and roll because i'm going to drain the oil too all right we're under the car now and there's your drain plug it's just a 10 millimeter allen and it screws right out we already drained it and then your oil level sensor is right here you got two tabs on the side you squeeze and pull you may have to get a pick underneath those as well because those are super tight and then we'll have to take this little cover right here should be i think four 10 millimeters if i remember correctly it four or three something like that yeah, remember but there's 10 millimeters that holds this little cover on and once you do that you just pull this out because it does hide your bolts that are up inside of here and you probably can't see them but there are a few bolts up inside here that run along the back of the oil pan and then your motor mounts there's a bolt there one there and one up inside of here and that's going to be the same on both sides uh, where am i yeah here here i think that one 
I'm kind of laying on my back, can't really see too well, but I think it's those three right there, and there's that last one's up inside this little hole next to this clip. And this is the driver's side, the other one was the passenger side. Just, I got y'all kind of upside down a little bit, and I'm on my back looking upside down. So it's a little different than what you may see on the video. But uh, they're, I think they're E8s uh, right there, one in between here, over there. And then that's the passenger side also. And then you can get to those up inside there and along the front. You shouldn't have any issues because you can go in to the front and get them. Like I said, the hardest one's on the driver's side because of this motor mount. And I think we can get in between. Once we get the motor mount out, we can go in between there and get those last two or three behind the motor mount. And then once we do that, we have to jack up the engine and pull them out. I'm thinking these motor mount bolts are it's 13s or 14s. I think they're 13s. But um, you just pull them out and then the motor mounts are ready to pull out too. I'm going to do both sides. The passenger side is a little different because it's up in there about the turbo and we shouldn't have to we're just going to unbolt that we shouldn't have to take it all the way off because we're just going with that up the only reason we're taking the bracket off on the driver's side is for those last few bolts looks like she has a little bit of a turbo leak on the let's see let me show you again looks like she's got maybe a little bit of a turbo leak on the oil system where that line that comes in from the bottom but it ain't too bad right now i'll let her know about that but the oil pan's the biggest one. I mean, it's actually was dripping all over my concrete right now. But let me go ahead and pull these bolts, and then I'll start um, doing the motor mounts and pulling them out. And I'll let y'all know. Like, I'll come back and let y'all know the sizes. So I went to the junk car to try to find one of these, and. This one right here is the wrong thread. Uh, to find out what thread these are for y'all. But I made my own. And it's had this bolt and an old race. And I just welded it all together. And it ain't the prettiest thing. But she will work. And it should hold pretty good. If that is too long, I'll just cut it off and weld another one on. Uh, but that right there is where you thread it in. This is a grade 8 bolt, just so you know. And threads lined up perfect and you can see it threads in and out but you're gonna have to have something like this to at least lift up the engine some because you won't have to have it even if you take the subframe out you won't have to have it just so you can lift the engine up and down and have some way of holding the engine I mean I know you shouldn't do it this way but um, you could also put a bar through here if you're taking a subframe out and hold it against this not the ideal way but if you're in a pinch you can do that i'm not going to do that i do have an engine holder i'm going to stick across through here set it up on the strut towers and stuff and hold this up the correct way but that is just a in a pinch thing if you got something you can at least go through here and hold it while you're doing this but we have the bolts for the motor mounts down there out out of the bottom of it those were 13 millimeters on both sides there were three of them and now all we got to do is lift up the engine and we can take these motor mounts off and i believe that those are like e10s or e12s i believe i want to check i have my torque e-torques out somewhere here we go here's our e-torques let me get an e12 and we're going to try. Yes, these are E12s, and I think even the, no, the one that goes to the motor mount itself is a little bigger. I'm guessing the E14, maybe an E16, E14. So we can take that off once we lift it up and get the mount and the bracket out of the way. And I know that the oil pan bolts, those are E8s. And I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling some of those off. But I'm gonna show you the little plate you gotta take off first to get to the back of the 
will pan because those are blocked by a little plate in between the engine and transmission. Here's that little cover I was talking about that goes in between the engine and transmission. It's got like a little rubber on it. You can see where oil's been getting on it right there. Kind of started to deteriorate it just a little bit. We'll set it to the side. It was just three 10 millimeters. And I wanted to show y'all a little bit of this new tool that I got while I'm at it. Yeah. So just pick this up like literally a few minutes ago. New Dewalt right here is the interchangeable head. Let's push the little button. Comes out quarter inch. You can go in. That was a three eighth. Push it. Now it's a quarter inch. Not only that, but it's a bit driver. See? Let's pull it out. Put your bits in there. So I'll give y'all a better update on it as I use it. But I did have to go get me a new 10 millimeter since I dropped it in the uh, freaking engine bay of that Honda Odyssey and I could not find it. I looked for another hour, could not find it anywhere. So put that in and it's real slim line too. 50 foot pounds of torque and he even has a lock for the button so you can't hit it whenever you put it into the uh, your bag or something. So, not really all that loud either. So go ahead and start pulling as many oil pan bolts as I can off. They are E8s. This is a Sunex brand. Just use whoever you got and you can have cheap ones just who I have. So go ahead and start pulling these off. Went ahead and got the motor mount bracket and the motor mount out. Here's your motor mount and it goes in just like this. Light part up to the top. This normally sits in there like this. And you can see how it lines up the hole right there. And this just gives you a better idea of what it looks like. And it just slips right out. It goes in and out real easy. The only other thing was that oil cooler right here. You can see it moving. There's four four millimeter Allens on there. And you're gonna have to use an actual Allen wrench to get that uh, back one off because it is real tight in there and it's hard to get in there with a uh, ratchet if you don't have the right one. I have a small ratchet and I could get it in there, but you want to take those four off and they're real loose. Uh, they probably ain't 10 newton meters, to be honest, tight on there. And then once you get that off, the uh, wire for your oil level sensor is got like a metal clip on it and you just pull that off. And there is a metal clip uh, right here. I want to make sure I'm showing y'all right. Right there. That goes on the motor mount itself. But it all just comes out through here. You can see the big hole down there. Yeah. That the motor mount was sitting in. I got all the oil pan bolts off. And there's the whole assembly. We got it jacked up pretty good got all the oil pan bolts off now and now i might try to even pull it off away from the engine just if you're going to reuse the pan and you're just doing a gasket i got a metal pan that i'm actually putting it on here uh besides the plastic one um i think uh, euro parts makes it but uh, i'm going to actually be putting a metal one back in so we have that going for us just because it does like make a greater chance of not stripping out the oil pan bolt but let me try to get underneath here and pry it off all right so ended up letting it back down and actually um using my engine hoist right here just because i couldn't get it up high enough but we got it up high as we could without breaking anything and the oil pan actually slid right out i did knock the little rubber piece that goes in between the transmission and the oil pan and the engine in there but here it is like it is completely out and free i do have to pull the oil level sensor out and switch it over but let me get the 
other oil pan and I'm going to stick it in here because it already has everything on it. I'll show it to you real quick too. Here is the metal oil pan. See it's even got a metal drain plug on it too and it even comes with an additional drain plug. So we'll give that to the owner. So she has it and we just got to switch over the oil sensor. And it goes right there. But she came out pretty easy compared to what I thought it was going to be. So let me pull this off just uh, three 10 millimeters. Oh, here's the part. Euro parts makes it. And uh, here it is right there. Uh, Euro-014300. Or you can look up any of those numbers right there. But I'm going to go ahead and swap it over. These are here to, to 10 newton meters as well. And then uh, we will get her on and I'll let you know about all the torque specs once we get it on. Alright, so where we're at right now is I have the oil pan on. I got about four bolts just kind of snug down or not even torqued or anything. They're just up against it and just maybe not even a quarter of a turn tight on there just to hold it on. But... I got the motor mount and the bracket back on over there just temporarily so I can set the engine down. It's getting dark and I won't finish it today. So I'll bring y'all back on the next day and we'll finish it up. Um, not much left to do now. The hard part's over getting the pan out. And thing is, you can lift this up enough to clear it, but just watch everything and make sure nothing is pulling nothing's breaking not, nothing is creaking any of that good stuff uh, i just went up a little bit at a time until i noticed um, the engine getting close to the firewall saw the line starting to pull a little bit like this is the one that i was really worried about just how tight it was you can take it loose over there on the driver's side if you want to but it was enough slack in it to where i did not have to do that so like i said i'm gonna finish it up uh tomorrow and i'll bring y'all back all right so it's the next day i got a canopy up because it is raining of course uh, try to do something on the ground and it's gonna rain but so it's fine. next day um you can see i've got pretty much everything back together only thing i got left to do is change the oil filter and then put the uh, cover back underneath and i just wanted to kind of show y'all what i've done and how we can put all this stuff back together so i know i showed y'all i had to make this little tool and that is a m16 2.0 thread and then i just want to show y'all again it is right here Right where these wires are, it's right there. It's where you thread it into. All right, um, got that tight. All the sensors are back on. All the push connectors are back on. So pretty much these right here. Let me show you right. Yep. So these little quick disconnects right here, like your um, evap lines and your uh, PCV lines and all that stuff right here. All of that is just push in, and you'll hear them click. Even these right here. For the uh, throttle body and it goes into the uh, little intercooler down there so those right there all you have to do is just seat them back in where they're supposed to go and you line it up uh, the bottom down there on the intercooler actually has tabs that it goes into so it can only go in one way but uh you just push it and you'll hear them click they'll probably click two or three times it'll be like pop 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 this one right here did it uh, four times actually so I wanted to make sure it was on there but yeah you'll hear them click into place uh, just push like once you hear at least two clicks uh, push a little bit more just to make sure that the rest of it is seated in but um, the oil filter is right here on top we have the cap off and I got mobile one oil to put back into it and I believe I got a Wix filter for this one but um there's a special tool you're supposed to have to take this off. Uh, let me go grab it and I'll show it to y'all. So here's the tool I got. It is from Motive Tools right here. Uh, I hang on to it. My hands are kind of slippery. Part number. I know y'all probably can't read it, but it's MX2326. I got it from FCP Euro. A lot of sponsor, but that's just where I get a lot of my 
like being dumpy tools and stuff like that. These aren't on here really tight. Uh, only their 25 newton meters is the torque and you can go up to 30 you can but it's between 25 and 30 but once you pop it loose just be mindful that you may lose some oil if you're not doing an oil filter i mean oil, oil pan and you can see it is cartridge filter we just want to go over here sometimes i can pop them out like that Try and do it one handed, but okay. There it is. You have a o ring right there, and then your main o ring on it right there. Make sure you change those. You have the oil right here. This is the European formula. So I got 540 European. Uh, I don't know the part number of this but that's what we're using filter right there 57327 wicks i wanted a man they didn't have a man brand in stock so and normally these do come with a new crush washer but you don't have to um use it if you're doing this conversion or doing a gasket or something you um if you're doing a, a whole pan, uh, it should come with all the new stuff on there. You shouldn't have to worry about it. I did check to make sure the uh, drain plug was tight. But this is our new filter. It does come with both of the, uh, what you call it. Let's come and get it in there. Let's sit y'all over here. Still got about all the covers on the bottom. I know I'm moving y'all. All around, but make sure we got it seated in there right. May have to get a pick. Sometimes you can kind of squeeze these, sometimes you can't. I don't know how well y'all can even see this because I can't see the camera. I should have took that off before. I know I need a pick, but this is what I got on hand at the second. I don't want to know why it won't get underneath there. It is hard and brittle, though. I need to spray this out with brake cleaner anyway, so. Dude, I ain't never had one this tough to even move. See how that thing broke? Got some brake cleaner right here. Cleaner off. Let's use a little beer fay. Alright, now it's clean. Little o ring. Big o ring and gloves slippery as crap right now. She's back on. So I'm gonna throw this on, torque it down, put it 25 newton meters. Oop. Still got a little bit of cleaner in there. Well, got the seals on. Gonna throw this on. Gonna torque it down to 25 newton meters. And make sure it spins, you know, it's not like twisted or anything. But I'm gonna torque it down, and then uh, as soon as I put all this on, put the oil in it, and all that good stuff, I'll bring y'all back and give y'all uh, torque specs, and then close out the video. Got everything together, I'm gonna go over some torque specs with y'all. And I like to write down all my torque specs just so I'm not running back and forth to the computer or I'm not uh, having to look at my phone all the time and all this other crap. But it just kind of minimizes. Uh, time to do stuff but oil has changed it's in uh 6.6 .6 quarts is what it calls for i went a little bit over that i went to about three quarters of a quart just because i'm um have the new pan on there and i know it can some of the crevices and all that stuff holds it and all this and whenever you put 6.6 .6 in it 
anyway you always add it's always gonna be a little higher than what it normally says so I did go to six and three quarters but uh, so pan no matter if you have the aluminum or the plastic pan 10 newton meters um, so I saw and I've seen this a couple times on the all wheel drives it does have an aluminum pan most of the time from what I've seen and from what I've read somebody may correct me if if I'm wrong, let us know in the comments just so we can get that out of the way. But um, even the aluminum pans are 10 newton meters. That's what it said on Protoman. Um, the mount brackets. The bracket to the engine, 38 newton meters. Mounting bracket to the mount is 100 newton meters. So it's that little, I think it's a, a E12 torx bit, uh, E torx. That torx to 100 newton meters. Then the mount that goes to the subframe or body, whatever you want to call it, that is only 19 newton meters. And then this brace right here is 27 newton meters for both of those bolts. That's all your torque specs. Um, I don't, don't think I'm forgetting anything. If I did, let me know if I forgot something. But I believe that's everything. Um, because I know if you're pulling the subframe off, there's other torque specs you're going to need. You're going to need a subframe. You're going to need, uh, I think, like um, your sway bar and a couple other little things, you know, that you're going to have to get torque specs for. But I'm just going over the ones that I personally took off while I was in here. So that's everything that I took off that I can remember. Um, this is tight. Also, don't forget to tighten that and put your clips back on. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I don't forget anything. Oh, the little 10 millimeters that go on the um, little cover that goes over the transmission. I didn't look up torque specs for those. I just kind of went, you know, just basically hand tight, ran it down, and gave it probably another quarter turn. That's all I did with that. Uh, that's not as crucial as any of this other stuff. And even the cover bolts that are on the bottom, just put them in there. You know, you can use your little quarter inch drive electric ratchet if you want to or something like that just just seat them down to make sure they're on there good and there's like a thousand of those little things on there so going through and torquing those would be a nightmare but like i said i believe that's everything uh if i did forget something let me know uh i can get it for you if y'all need it also i think i gave y'all a part number to the oil pan i think i gave y'all a part number for the oil filter uh if there's anything else y'all need, like I said, just let me know. Um, I want to say thank you to all my viewers, subscribers, uh, members, all that stuff. Uh, thank you for the support. Uh, I do have the Patreon. I do have the Instagram. I got you know shirts, hats, and stickers. If anybody's interested in any of that, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram, and I'll get those to you. I hope to have a site probably this year, if possible. And I think that's everything. If you like the video, hit the like, subscribe, notification bell. If you don't like it, let me know why and look at some of the other stuff I have. I got over almost 300 videos now. Check them out. You might find something you do like. And y'all remember, torque the stake. Y'all have a great day. All right, bonus. I forgot to show y'all how to reset the oil life on this. So, you go turn it till, till it's on. Press and hold. It's like a little reset button over here on the right. You just kind of hold it until something pops up. I should not do it this time. Come on. Okay, there it is. And you let off. And then you press it down again and hold. Let off when you see it with the question mark. Press it down again and hold. And you'll see it saying reset in progress. Just go until it's done, and then boom, there you go. And it is reset. Just want to show you all that. That's just a little bonus on the video. I uh, will do it after I do the closing.